You know, one connection that I have, uh, you know, to I believe everyone in this room, but especially like when me and uh, Virgil and Don C and Father Bentley and all the people from the infamous Tommy Ton then transferred to South Park photo uh, have dealt with in their life somehow, you know, being ridiculed for liking fashion, for that being a career that you want to take up. Like even like the stylist I work with, that's my, I, I always call her my baby, uh, m uh, M.A.S., Marie Amelie Souve. Like, you're my M.A.S. and I'm your Nicholas. Uh, and her brother's a doctor. And somehow in her family, she's looked like she didn't do as much with her life because she did fashion and something. And, you know, and you know, she was the, the little girl that um, eight years ago showed me who Emmanuel Art was. Back when I was you know, less informed about how to put my shit together. Uh, and I honest, I'm gonna jump to some points just so I don't take too long. I believe that the world can be changed. The world can be saved through design, through unselfish design, through unselfish creation. You know, God is the number one creator. I'm a Christian, I'm not trying to force my uh, opinions on anyone. But in my opinion, God is the number one creator. And we, anytime we, you know, create, we're, we're an extension of doing his work on earth. While we're here, what can we do for humanity? And, you know, in a way, the fashion is what defines the time. People could think in some way they're a higher class system, higher status, or contribute more to the world because, you know, they, they work on bombs, they work at technology, they, you know, the school teachers, whatever it is that seems to be somehow that type of profession that whenever you say it, everybody's, oh, you're a lawyer, oh, great. Lawyer, motherfucker. Uh, <laughs> So, no knock to lawyers, but you know what I'm talking about. So, um, there are no movies without fashion. We define the times, we set in stone. What, what, did, what did 2015 mean? What did 2014 mean? You know, the, I always told Anna, I said, like, I wanna, I wanna be in the middle of that conversation. As we all know, the Devil Wears Prada was about Anna. So, uh, I was like, I wanna be in the middle of that conversation no, no, say, we know this. So, uh, where um, she was talking about the blue sweater. And previous to Instagram and all that type of shit, do you know this conversation? We said, you think you're not a part of fashion because you don't da 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 da. And like the blue sweater, okay, you would know this. And somehow, like me and my crew, you know, these like straight black guys from Chicago that no one knew why they were at the fucking show, you know, wanted to say, Let's make the conversation, uh, you know, let's make the conversation shorter between, you know, when the blue sweater goes from a, uh, a, a Wang show to when it finally, you know, hits Coles or something. Pre-Instagram, pre all that shit, pre-people, you know, wanting to show what they had before images were the new currency. Um, when we talk about, you know, uh, I was talking to Rossi earlier and he was saying, you know, what his background was and, you know, the way he appreciates all of his opportunities that he has, like just being able to be in America and create. And I told him he had to arm wrestle with Virgil on who was the like greatest guy that I knew, because he's definitely one of the top, you know, one of, these, one of these times where I look at like him and say, wow, you know, I wish that I could interact with people in the way that he interacts. I wish that I could believe, with pe believe in people unselfishly without you know, worrying about how it might affect me, how it affects my reputation, blah, blah, or like all of what, pa uh, what fashion is. Because I think that word fashion insiders, but everyone's a fashion insider. You know, it's illegal to be naked. Everyone has some form of fashion every single day. Um, and I think it's the point I want to make before I bring them up, because I wanted to make this point to this room, really. You know, we have the power to change the world, I believe that through design, because design is the closest to truth, problem solving, truth is the closest to love, love is the closest thing to God, and God is love. But we have to be unselfish in our approach, which is the opposite of someone saying, Kanye, you can't get into the show because you're a celebrity or some shit like that, you know? 
uh, the way we've embraced celebrity, the way what Miley's had to go through in the past couple years dealing with the fashion bigots and shit like that. I'm not gonna give you guys a speech that Tarantino <laughs> gave at the LACMA. I'm gonna say what the fuck he really should have said, you know? <laughs> and uh, the old guard <laughs> accepting the new guard by letting down their guard. I don't know if I even made one fucking good point. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, but what I want to say is, this guy let me, a celebrity designer, work at Milk Studio when Adidas couldn't figure out where my office was. We didn't have windows, but it was, you know, it's cool, you know, we'd go out and get a coffee. We, we stole a bunch of free cappuccinos from down the hallway. And I promised him that I was going to be fucking good. It wasn't about me being a celebrity, because it could have been like, what do you mean? You got the celebrity designer working at Milk Studios? This is a very authentic, you know, blah, blah, all this shit. And he told me a story about this kid that stood on his steps and shit, you know, waiting for an opportunity to design that went on to one day become the youngest American to run a French house called Balenciaga. That he believed in that kid back then, believing in spending everything on Alexander Wang. Um, and I'm closing now. Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't move, I don't leave my fucking crib unless I really believe in someone. I don't read the teleprompters, blah, blah, blah. And I'm so happy that Jeremy's here because Jeremy asked me to come here also. And Jeremy's another one of those bad motherfuckers that changed the game and always expressed himself. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I'm not gonna say shit else. You got okay time. So all I'm gonna say is I fucking love this guy and he sets an example to us as a humanitarian, as a visionary and as a innovator. Rossi. <laughs> Wow, thank you. Wow, that was amazing. Um, it is an honor to receive this award tonight. It is, um, it is also a great honor to receive it from one of the most visionary artists of our time. So thank you, Kanye. I, uh, I want to thank my beautiful wife, Zana, here tonight. <laughs> Keeping it in the family. It's, uh, it's not every day. Um, I love you very much. Thank you. Um, innovation is a collaborative effort. So I accept this award uh, on behalf of the 200 innovators back at Milk in both uh, New York and in Los Angeles. Um, they are the people who work every day to come up with incredible visionary ideas. Um, 20 years ago, we started this idea of Milk which was to facilitate collaborations. So we're much more than a studio. Uh, it has truly become a movement of young creatives. And I'm very proud of what we've built. So I just want to thank The Daily. And I want to thank all of you for having me here tonight. Thank you.